This is video number five of the balance of payments unit, which is unit 3.3 of the IB economic syllabus. This video is higher level students, it's for higher level students only. In this video, I'm going to explain and evaluate um, the implications of a current account deficit and the methods governments can employ to correct persistent current account deficits. So let's get started. The first learning outcome is to discuss the implications of a persistent current account deficit. Remember, a one-off current account deficit isn't really that much of a problem, but a persistent current account deficit might have some negative implications. And the factors that I mentioned in the IB economic syllabus are those six. First of all, um, a persistent current account deficit may increase foreign ownership of domestic assets because in order to finance that deficit, the country may have to have a surplus on the financial account, and this may increase the foreign ownership of domestic assets um, due to attracting foreign investment to invest in the country as a source of foreign exchange. It may also have a downward pressure on the exchange rate. Remember, a persistent current account deficit means that the country overall is importing a lot more than it is exporting. So the demand for its currency, the foreign demand for its currency is weaker than the supply of its currency on the forex market. So this may have a downward pressure on exchange rates. At the same time, it may lead to interest rates being raised. Um, in order to finance this current account deficit, the country, uh, the central bank, may have to raise interest rates as a way of attracting foreign investment. Now, if they raise interest rates, this makes it more difficult for domestic investors to borrow money and invest. At the same time, a persistent current account deficit leads to an increase in indebtedness. Okay, It may increase the country's indebtedness because if the country is borrowing a lot from um, foreign banks and from foreign markets in order to finance its persistent deficit, its level of indebtedness will increase, which may influence its international credit ratings. Okay, the trustworthiness of the credit worthiness of the country and its ability to pay back any loans um, is, is essentially its credit rating. And um, if a country is borrowing so much from foreign countries, its international credit ratings may fall. Last but not least, it affects demand management because in order to decrease demand for imports as a way of lowering this persistent current account deficit, the, the government may have to ad adopt policies to decrease aggregate demand um, overall, which would eventually decrease demand for imports, but this may hurt domestic growth and employment. So these are the six factors that are um, uh, included in the IB economic syllabus as the implications or possible consequences of a persistent current account deficit. So if a government has a persistent current account deficit, what are the methods that the government can use to correct this persistent deficit? The first group of policies are called expenditure switching policies. These include export promotion policies where the government tries to promote exporting industries by giving them tax, maybe tax breaks or subsidies. Or trade protection, the government may uh, put tariffs or um, quotas uh, in order to uh, limit imports, um, or the government may decide to devalue its currency. By devaluing its currency, it's making imports more expensive and exports cheaper, which might encourage uh, foreign countries uh, uh, to buy more goods and services from that country and therefore that country would increase its exports. Now, expenditure switching policies are all policies that are designed to make people switch instead of buying imports to buy domestically produced uh, goods and services. That's why they're called expenditure switching policies. The other set of policies that a government can use to correct a persistent current account deficit are called expenditure reducing policies. Uh, these are policies that are designed to, re to reduce overall expenditure, overall aggregate demand, in hope that that would also reduce domestic demand for imports. This can be done by applying a contractionary fiscal policy, so raising taxes and lowering government expenditure, 
or having a contractionary monetary policy where the government raises interest rates to make it more difficult for consumers and businesses to borrow in hope that this would limit the demand for imports. These are called expenditure reducing policies because they're aimed at reducing overall aggregate demand. The last set of policies are supply side policies designed to increase the country's competitiveness. This can be done by investments in education and healthcare. So investing in the human capital of your workforce, which over time would make them more productive and hopefully lead to better goods and services that can be exported and, and less need for imports. It also includes investments in infrastructure designed to make industries more competitive and maybe attract FDI, foreign um, direct investment. Um, also, the government could adopt policies to encourage export industries by maybe giving them subsidies uh, or tax breaks to encourage export industries. Now, the IB economic syllabus also requires that you evaluate the effectiveness of these policies. So what's the problem with expenditure switching policies? Well, if you are subsidizing exporting industries, that comes at a huge opportunity cost because that's money that could be spent elsewhere. They're very expensive. At the same time, if you're adopting trade protectionist measures, other countries may retaliate. And overall, that's not good because we've learned from um, previous units that free trade without any protection is better for the global economy. Uh, so there's an efficiency loss with that. So expenditure switching policies, even the currency devaluation, if the country decides to devalue its currency, it might lead to imported inflation because it makes any raw materials or components that are being imported a lot more expensive. So ex expenditure switching policies may not always work, especially if the demand for imports is inelastic. If these are necessities that the country needs, you're just making those imports more expensive for local consumers and businesses. Now, what about the evaluation of um, expenditure reducing policies? Well, if you're adopting contractionary fiscal and contractionary monetary policies to decrease aggregate demand, this will hurt the overall economy because it slows down the economy's economic growth and could lead to higher unemployment. So expenditure reducing policies also have a downside. They might affect domestic economic growth and domestic employment negatively. Last but not least, supply side policies to increase competitiveness are great, but number one, they're very costly, so the taxpayers might not be happy, and they usually only show their benefits or their impact in the long run. So basically, there's a lot of short-term pain and costliness to the taxpayers and a very high opportunity cost for very long-term gain, so they might not be as politically popular. If you're looking for an online IB Economics tutor, I offer IB Economics online tutoring services. Just click at the link below the video. Click on the link below the video in the description section. Have a good day.